Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's so excited to be here. I'm Chen Wang from IBM Research. I'm a staff research scientist uh, working on cloud native AI platform, and I have been working on Kubernetes for five more years. This is Abhishek. Hello, folks. Um, I'm a senior software engineer here at IBM and excited to be here. So uh, today uh, we are going to introduce some of our experience and best practices on LLM serving. Uh, so before that, we all know LLM has been attracting a lot of attention and then serving LLMs uh, will help a lot in um, modernize the, the, the existing business use cases and applications. So however, serving uh, large language models is very expensive. So first it needs to run on high and GPU accelerators such as A100 or even H100. And then the sequential nature of large language models uh, makes the inference for uh, processing time very long. So for one A100 uh, accelerator, if you want to process and request, it's less than one request per second. So if you are thinking about production use cases or our business use cases, you may need tons of those requests, inference requests going through, and then it will need tons of uh, GPUs, which is apparently very costly. And then um, the, the, the diagram just shows uh, a simple toy example of how LRM is making the inference iteratively and um, so it is generating token per token, and every time it generates a new token, which is a word, it needs to cache all the previous tokens in your cache. So this sequential nature makes it very, uh, like takes a lot of resources and uh, makes the LM inference very slow. So uh, that's why in production use cases, we really want to uh, have some techniques to improve the throughput and performance of um, inference. And then there are two popular techniques uh, in the open source of a wider academia community to improve the RM serving. Uh, one is called continuous batching and the other is page attention. So for the batching part, continuous batching is basically derived from the static batching, which is utilize more memory to batch more requests to use more uh, GPU more efficiently. And then continuous batching is just continuously understanding how many requests are coming in and then utilize the memory better to continuous put requests, uh, concatenated requests to the previous ones. So uh, you maximize your memory utilization as well as your GPU utilization. Uh, so the page to attention kernel technique is similar. It's tried to map the logical blocks of KV cache, uh, which is necessary to generate to the next token, to uh, the physical KV cache blocks so you can have more efficient uh, utilization of memory and reduce the resource fragmentations in the uh, memory space allocation. Um, so, um, in our case, we have research clusters and we want to serve a lot of GPU models for uh, the wider uh, uh, users in our research lab. And then um, uh, we find out if we want to serve a wider range of models, and then some models are very popular and some models may be idling for uh, a long time, but researchers are still want to use those. And uh, in this case, for example, we if we want to serve 50 models and find out 30 of those um, uh, unpopular models, but necessary to serve. And then if we use one GPU to serve those unpopular models, and then we will find out we still have a very long long tail GPU underutilized. So how can we solve this problem? And uh, we are thinking about like packing more uh, unpopular models in fewer number of GPUs. And then the available techniques of GPU sharing uh, available nowadays can be time sharing, MPS, and uh, make. And then due to the nature of the batching and the, 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 the memory of uh, page attention kernel or flash attention kernels, uh, memory optimizations in those servers, 
Uh, so we really think if you limit the memory allocation, you're not using the uh, compute efficiently enough. So because MPS and time sharing really are uh, uh, targeting the dynamic sharing of HBM space, and those unpredictable memory allocation may lead to exceptions easily uh, when there's there are uh, birthday requests are coming in. So then we want to try the make partition uh, initially, which is static partitioning the uh, memory space. So uh, we did, uh, did some simple experiments on uh, benchmarking the Mistral model uh, on different uh, varying size of uh, make partitions. And then if we set the per token uh, generation latencies to 50 milliseconds per token. And then we found out like uh, if the load is low enough, like there's less, uh, fewer than 32 concurrent users of uh, sending requests, then we can guarantee the latency pretty well using sl smaller mix sizes like 4G, 40 GB. Uh, however, uh, uh, in our practice, we find out if we use the NVIDIA uh, default GPU operator to enable MIG, uh, every time we want to reconfigure the MIG partitions, we need to evict all the uh, workloads on all GPUs on our server. Uh, so uh, this, but, but from, because the optimal MIG partition we need uh, for serving the model really change over time, over very load. So we want a dynamic way to create MIG partitions. So that's why uh, Abhishek will talk more about how we use DRA. Thank you, Chen, for uh, walking us through the importance of using MIG slices for uh, inference workload. Um, let's quickly uh, dive into DRA. So DRA stands for Dynamic Resource Allocation, and it provides two new APIs, uh, basically resource claim and, and resource class uh, to request um, GPU resources. And while DRA is a blanket statement, but it solves a very important use case for us, uh, which is uh, the ability to have incremental mix slices on um, some of the vendor GPUs. So as we see that uh, in the DRA world, there is a quite a lot of setup that is needed to enable uh, GPU sharing. So on the right hand side uh, of the screen in the middle, we see that uh, there are different resource claims like GPU claim parameters and make device claim parameters uh, that are needed to be set up. Um, and those uh, claim parameters are then uh, called on or referenced into this OPD model workload that we see over here. Let's quickly uh, dive into uh, the demo here. So what we do here is uh, we submit the same workload uh, that we just saw on the previous slide. Um, as we submit this workload, we see few um, resources that are created, but notable resources here are the resource claims that are uh, created. Um, once uh, the desired resources are created, then uh, the container uh, comes up and inside the container what we have is the VLLM server. We wait for some time for the VLLM server to come up and enable port forwarding uh, to interact with it. Now uh, we send a prompt or a sentence completion request to the model uh, saying San Francisco is a... And, and finally we do get a response that uh, it's a great place to, to live in uh, by the OPT model workload here. Uh, thank you for uh, watching this demo. If you want to learn a bit more about DRA, uh, we do have another full talk here um, on, on Thursday. Um, questions? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we do have the uh, the barcode of the talk and also the other tutorial on how we deploy uh, VLM server uh, using DRA uh, in the previous slides. So, and the demo link is also available.